What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. With Season of the Deep introducing a new catalyst for the Malfeasance Exotic Hand Cannon, I wanted to put together an updated guide on how to acquire the Malfeasance and its catalyst in Destiny 2 Lightfall. With the addition of this new catalyst, Malfeasance gets Vorpal, which gives it bonus damage against high-ranking enemies, bosses, and guardians in supers. This also adds an extra 10 points of range to an already accurate as hell hand cannon, with bonus damage to Taken and the ability to stun unstoppable champions. The Malfeasance has quickly risen as being one of the best exotics currently in the game. So in turn, new light guardians and returning guardians should make obtaining the Malfeasance and its catalyst an extreme priority. Since being released back in 2018, there have been a number of changes to how guardians acquire the Malfeasance, in many ways simplifying this once obscene questline. The Malfeasance is still part of the Light and Darkness exotic questline, and to start this quest, you will need to win a match of Gambit. By defeating the Primeval, you will receive the first step of Light and Darkness. If you ever lose the quest for any reason, or want to pick it up on another character, you can visit the quest kiosk in the tower. After visiting Drifter in the tower, you'll need to defeat 25 Taken bosses, or mini-bosses. For the fastest method to complete this step, I would recommend heading to the Dreaming City, into Aphelion's Rest, be lined straight to the boss, and unload your heaviest DPS rounds. Quickly exit out the back way until the load zone changes. Now you can just double back and repeat the process 24 more times to have this step done in about 30 minutes. Swords with Eager Edge and Arc Builds with Speed Boosters can really shorten that time. The next step gets a bit trickier though. Step 3 requires you to complete a variant of the Corrupted Strike. You'll have to travel to Resilvia to start this activity, which is a 1600 light level strike that can prove to be challenging at even 1800. For the most part, this strike plays out just like the normal version of the Corrupted, but there's an alternate way that you have to enter into the Ascendant Plane. And after the section with too many ogre bosses and a room full of shriekers, you'll actually make your way to a secluded section of the Ascendant Plane, where you will fight a Taken Phalanx boss. I'll let the majority of this strike play through, that way those who are having issues finding your way through can be able to get help with that. Otherwise, if you've already completed this step, you can skip forward. I will be leaving timestamps in the description below.
This Phalanx boss can be quite tricky as he will force push you to your demise and he can tether you as well, much like the Lake of Shadows boss. You'll be on a small platform, but there are rotating rocks to all sides and a large boulder on the main platform that can provide great cover. It's best to play cat and mouse with this boss so you can avoid getting blasted off of the side. Try not to expose your back towards the edge of the platforms. Always keep yourself facing the center with the boss being towards the outer perimeter. While it's not the tankiest boss in Destiny, it can still be pretty tough, especially for a solo guardian. So this might be a section that you want to call on a friend to jump in and help with. Once you've completed the strike, you'll have to head back to the tower and visit with the Drifter. The next step of the quest will require you to win 10 matches of Gambit. In addition to this, you will need to deposit moats, but there is a catch. In total, you'll need to deposit 500 moats, but anytime you die with moats, however many moats you died with will be deducted from your current total. This can prove to be a very annoying step to complete, but to make it easiest on yourself, you should prioritize banking moats as often as possible. Take a backseat approach to add clearing, focus on collecting moats quickly and immediately returning them to the depository. Be aware of invading guardians, they'll be after your head and your moats, so avoid collecting moats when invaders have arrived and try to not expose yourself to their attacks since you'll be dedicating a substantial amount of time towards getting 10 wins in Gambit you should be able to complete both of these requirements at the same time. After you've finally gotten your 10th win and deposited your 500th moat, you'll move on to the final part of the Light and Darkness quest. This step is what will likely cause you to have a few mini strokes in the process of completing. There are two separate tasks to complete this final step. The first is to defeat a total of 25 guardians in Gambit. This can be done when guardians are invading your team or when you are invading theirs, but you have to get the final blow against those guardians for progress to count. There's multiple opportunities to catch invaders or invade during each match. You may have to fight with some blueberries on who jumps through the portal, but if you can get a few teammates involved, you can hopefully take lead at invading. The Gallarhorn, the Truth, the Jotun, the Two-Tailed Fox, or the Colony are just a few exotics that can be of immense benefit when taking on other guardians. And over the last few seasons, the Thunderlord has been a fantastic choice that can really do well against invaders or when you are invading. The second part of the quest can be completed in one of two ways. Option one, you will need to invade the enemy team and wipe all four players during one single invasion. This only has to be done once. Filling up on the aforementioned heavy weapons and having an aggressive super like Golden Gun will be a tremendous benefit before jumping over to the other side. But the biggest thing that will help you will be to get familiar with each Gambit map, knowing how the mechanics transition and what the load-in zones are for each area. As you get more familiar with how each match progresses, you'll start to inherently know where the potential spots that an invader will come in at or where the opposing team will be as you're invading. But I digress. Option two might be a bit more lucrative for many of you because this is going to leave the duties of invading up to your teammates. Instead of you invading and getting four kills, you'll need teammates to go in and wipe the opposing team on three separate occasions. This could boil out to be a matter of luck with your matchmaking. But if you know anyone that's really good at invading, 
you should try sweet talking them into running a few gambit matches. All else fails, there's several different LFG platforms, including Bungie's official Fire Team Finder and those that are available through Discords, which you can find a link to mine in the description below. Once you've finally finished both of these steps, you'll be done with the light and darkness questline, and will just need to stop by the tower and visit Drifter to receive your very own Malfeasance. Once you have the Malfeasance, the catalyst can be obtained by completing Gambit matches, Crucible matches, or any Vanguard playlist activity. This can drop as a random reward from any of these activities. I found it best to hit up low level nightfalls. It took me about 10 to 15 before I was able to get the catalyst. Once obtaining the catalyst, you'll need to defeat 700 enemies with the Malfeasance itself. You can hit up the Shirochi checkpoint of the Last Wish Raid or the intro phase of the Grasp of Avarice. Or you can just start using the Malfeasance in your everyday loadout and you should have that catalyst masterwork in no time at all. While it's still a long and cumbersome quest to complete, it is nowhere near as difficult as it once was. With that being said, I recommend a little breather every now and then to regain your composure and patience, because some of these steps will certainly test you. But I do wish you all the best and luck in acquiring the Malfeasance and its catalyst. Let me know what you think of this exotic hand cannon in the comments below. If you've got any additional questions or tips for your fellow guardians, then be sure to leave those down in the comments as well. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. And until next time guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.